This is Scotland. This is Scotland. And this. Obviously, this is Scotland. And this is. And guess what? This country isn't all about kilts and haggis. Oh no. People are always saying that about Scotland. So, here's a few more facts for you. Almost five and a half million people live here. It's nearly 80,000 square kilometres big. It has its own parliament, its own national sports teams. It even has its own internet address. And then there's the UK, which includes Scotland. It has a population of more than 66 million people. It's 250,000 square kilometres big. Yes, it has its very own parliament, its own national sports teams, and I, you guessed it, it's got its own internet address as well. Yep, it's a wee bit confusing. Is Scotland its own country or is it part of the UK? Well, the question everyone here in Scotland is asking, should Scotland become its very own independent country or should it remain part of the bigger country? Well, I'm going to be honest, we're not going to answer this question because, um, because well, it's impossible really. All you need to know is that some people believe that Scotland should become independent, meaning they would leave the United Kingdom, while others think Scotland should stick to being part of the UK. This is Holyrood, home of the Scottish Parliament, and politicians here are divided on this issue too. So hold up, how did Scotland end up becoming a country within a country? Well, there's a lot of history behind that. And I mean, a lot. So to keep things short and to give you some kind of idea, here are three dates. But I've got to be honest with you, this is in no way a history lesson. If you want that, it's time to grab a couple of pieces of toast and check out the BBC Bite Size website, okay? Alrighty, well let's head back more than 300 years to the year 1707. In 1707, Scotland's Parliament, as well as the Parliament for England and Wales, merged, and a place called the Kingdom of Great Britain was formed. Scotland and England shared a king since 1603, but it took 100 years and to be honest, quite a bit of arguing for both countries to reach an agreement. Let's fast forward 290 years because I've got something else to tell you. In 1997, people living in Scotland were asked to vote on whether they wanted a separate parliament to deal with big issues in Scotland. Almost 75% of voters said yes. So by 1999, control over some big issues like education and hospital policy were moved to the Scottish Parliament. It was the first time a Scottish Parliament had met since 1707. See, I told you these were important dates, didn't I? The process is called devolution, and while some powers moved to Scotland, others stayed with the UK Parliament in London. Things like borders, defence, and relations with other countries. The last date to talk about is 2014, because that's when Scotland had another referendum. A referendum is when people are asked to vote on a question, and this one was pretty simple. Should Scotland be an independent country? Meaning Scotland would leave the UK and be entirely responsible for its own laws. This time, no got more votes. 55% in total. Around 380,000 more votes. So Scotland stayed as it is. A country within a country. However, 45% of people still voted to go independent. That support, as well as people voting since then for political parties they believe are in favour of independence, has caused many others to believe that the question of Scotland's independence hasn't really been answered. Okay, that was very political, but Scotland is a very beautiful place with a lot of fantastic people. Trust me, I'm from here, I know, but you don't need to take my word for it. Here's a bunch of other people from Bonnie, Scotland to tell you what they love about the place. I think being Scottish, it means not taking yourself too seriously. A warm place in my heart, a place that I love. I was born here and I lived here all my life. You know, playing for my country and... It's my home and um, it's the only place I've ever grown up. It's always a, always an honour. Like, you're very proud to be Scottish. My favourite food in Scotland is... The tatty scone. Is the cranikin, which is a, which is a Scottish dessert. It's probably haggis. I don't like haggis. Haggis, either meat or vegetarian, and uh, mashed 
potato and mashed turnip together. So it's absolutely delicious. I love iron brew. Well, iron brew is definitely up there. I love a can of that. Fish and chips from a Scottish chippy. My favourite place in Scotland is Glencoe, up by Fort William, up to like Sky. Just keep going. Arthur's Seat, which is a dormant volcano. It's a small village in Fife called Ely. The Isle of Arran, and it's a beautiful island off the coast, the west coast of Scotland. This is Bromidy Beach. Why would you want to live anywhere else? So why is independence so important? Well, a study in 2020 asked what issues the UK faces. In Scotland, 10% mentioned independence. That's about the same amount of people that said the environment. Let me shorten that for you. This issue really matters to people here. Ah, oh, thank you. So I went and chatted to two people who are on different sides of this argument to find out what they had to say. Hi, I'm Phoebe, and I believe Scotland should be an independent country. Hi, I'm Seb, and I would like Scotland to stay in the UK. I believe Scotland should become an independent country because there is a lack of trust and a lack of accountability between Scotland and Westminster at the moment. I'm proud to be Scottish, and I'm also really proud to be British. We have so much security of being part of the UK. I think leaving that would be far more smaller. I'm 16, so if Scotland was to have another referendum, I would have the opportunity to vote and I think it's fair to say no one knows what an independent Scotland would look like. When the last referendum took place I was nine years old and I didn't quite understand it but now I'm 16 and if another one was to come along, which I hope it wouldn't, I would definitely vote. We do have the resources to cope and actually it would be a positive thing for us because we'd have much more control over where we spend our money and how we recover from Covid. The independence debate is huge in Scotland, everyone has an opinion on it. A lot of my mates think differently to me and we can have a lot of banter about it. I think young people are passionate about what's going on because it affects them and it affects them disproportionately actually in, in the population because we, we're the people who are going to have to live with these decisions for the rest of our lives. If I was to imagine an independent Scotland, honestly, I'd be quite worried. My biggest worry is for the future is that we, we don't do anything. If we were to change countries perhaps, I'd be worried that everything could go wrong. My biggest worry is that we don't change and that we don't move forward as a country because we need to. I think that independence is a distraction from the issues we face right now. There are lots of difficult issues around whether Scotland should remain part of the UK or become an independent country. One thing's for sure, it doesn't matter what side of the divide these people are on, they're always passionate. And if we've learned one thing throughout this journey is that Scottish independence is all about how people feel whether it's about the laws that are being made, whether it's about what's happening in different parts of the country, whether it's about where they live, whether it's about what's happening in their present or even in their future.